And here this is where St. John Chrysostom says, your prayer can't just be empty. Your prayer can't just be one that is prayed for the sake of you praying and simply, you know, put it off as if it was a task. No. He says your intention matters. The intention of you wanting to stand before the Lord when no one is looking is of extreme importance. Here I am reminded of how difficult that pandemic period of COVID was on so many of us. So many of us were used to be able to pray, but in a communal setting. As long as we can gather all together at church for liturgy, as long as we can gather all together for midnight praises, as long as we can come to the youth meetings, the Bible studies, then there was no problem for all of us to stand together and pray. But suddenly when we found ourselves during this pandemic locked up all by ourselves at home, so many of us called our spiritual guides and talked about how it is it was so difficult for us to pray even while at home alone. And interestingly, what we've discovered is that we're really good at communal prayer. Many of us have not yet developed the inclination to desire to go to that secret place and stand before the Lord when no one else is around me, when it's just me and Him. I'm encouraged by my brothers and sisters in the communal setting of the church, and this is an important aspect of why the church prays together as one body. But there is also a need for me to have intimacy with the Lord. And so intention of wanting to stand before Him, the intention of doing it when no one is looking, the intention of not having any reward other than my encounter with Him is of extreme importance. What does St. John say? He says, while pretending to pray to God, the hypocrites are looking around for human praise. It's as if they have like <laughs> the side eye open in order for them to check to see, you know, who's paying attention, who's noted that I am praying righteously. While pretending to pray to God, the hypocrites are looking around for human praise. One who is earnestly offering a supplication looks exclusively to the one who has the power to grant the request and lets all other claims recede. But if you leave behind the one you are petitioning and immediately go wandering about looking everywhere for others' approval, you will depart with empty hands. God forbid that this should be what we experience. God forbid that we should find ourselves in a situation where I come to God desiring to receive from Him, but instead my posture changes and I begin to look elsewhere. And instead of looking into the eyes of the one that I have come to petition, the one that I have come to be in relationship with, if I'm distracted by others, then I leave and my hands are empty. Why? Because my posture wasn't directed towards him. My intention was never towards him, but rather towards those who I want to observe me, who I want to note that I am holy, I am righteous, I am pious. God forbid that this should be our intention. You see, this can't happen if we pray in that secret place. If we begin to pray by recognizing the importance of having a prayer corner in my bedroom, a dedicated prayer space in my home, even a closet. But there's got to be somewhere where I go to God and it's only Him and I in those moments. It's only me and Him, intimate with one another. No one else sees us. It's one-on-one -on -one time, just between me and my Lord. Again, St. John, he talks about the importance of us running after Him, pursuing Him. And what is the reward that we receive when we pursue the Lord? Well, listen to what St. John says. He says, the hypocrite's reward comes from those from whom they themselves most desire to get it. Which means what? If you're constantly focused on the public and how the public is going to perceive you, then you'll get your reward. People will tell you you're righteous. People will give you a good word. People will encourage you and say, you look like a holy guy or a holy girl. Congratulations. You got your reward from them. But then he says, God does not desire this. For God preferred to bestow upon humanity the grace that comes only from himself. Those who seek the reward from people cannot receive another reward from the one for whom they have sought nothing. You see, the intention of the heart here is of extreme importance. You didn't intend to receive reward from God because your intention and your motivation was the reward from others and that's what you'll get. Basically, what this means is what? If I'm a beggar, and my hand is stretched out to person A, then it's person A who is going to give me. That's where I'm going to receive from. If I really desire to receive from person B, then my entire person should have been pointed towards person B. In this very specific situation, what does St. John say? He says, those who seek the reward from people cannot receive another reward from the one from whom they sought nothing. If you weren't going to God to begin with, 
you cannot receive from God. And that's not because the Lord will deprive you. It's because you weren't there. You didn't show up to receive from Him. And so the encouragement that we should have is when remembering that as we begin this process of desiring to have a relationship of prayer with the Lord, then our intention should be towards Him. Again, when no one is looking, that secret place. And the Lord was so faithful in telling us, your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So we ought not be those who only pray communally. And by the way, just to be clear, this is not me suggesting that we shouldn't pray together at church. Of course not. That is of extreme importance. The reward of praying together as one body liturgically in the church it is such an incredible, um, it, it's like fuel that energizes us to be able to recognize the importance of coming together as one body. The same way that the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles themselves when they were gathered together praying. But that doesn't mean that the apostles didn't have personal relationship with the Lord. Of course they prayed by themselves. They came together at times, but they also had personal and intimate relationship as they themselves went into that secret place that the Lord Jesus had taught them about.